The most common theory and the official explanation issued by the local Phoenix military is that the Phoenix lights were military flares dropped by the Maryland Air National Guard over the Barry Goldwater Range, southwest of Phoenix. That was just ridiculous. Flares go down, they don't float across the sky. Being in the military, I've launched those flares and they were not flares. Uh, as flares fall you know, up and down, they don't fall. Even in the wind, they don't maintain that altitude. While it is certainly possible that the military did in fact drop flares around 10 p.m., their flare drop does not coincide with a mass sighting witnessed by approximately 10,000 people across the state of Arizona and in locations all over Phoenix earlier that evening. These lights up here represent aircraft flares. If you'll notice, they're not in any straight line. They vary in distance between each other. And if you look at the top, you can see the smoke. As the flare falls, it leaves a trail of smoke above it from the burning magnesium in the flare. Flares are moving relative to each other. They're moving at different speeds. The Phoenix lights are rock steady. Many experts agree that if the Air National Guard dropped any flares at all on the evening of March 13th, it was solely for the purpose of creating a smokescreen to confuse the facts and that many reported sightings were of the flare drop, which the military could later explain away. It is a ready explanation for what everybody saw. And that makes it easy for the public to just seize on that and, oh, well, what they saw was flares. Explains everything, end of Phoenix lights. The flare theory is a nice, convenient way to explain glowing lights in the sky, and seems like the most logical explanation for the Phoenix lights until you consider all the reasons why the theory doesn't work. First, consider the fact that the Barry Goldwater Range has been in continuous operation since 1941, and countless flares have been dropped over the range for several decades. Wouldn't you think that people in Phoenix would be used to seeing them? What would prompt thousands of people to suddenly call into local newspapers, police stations, news stations, radio stations, and Luke Air Force Base, all on the same night and all around the same time? It's plainly obvious that many people saw something very strange, not something as routine as a flare drop, and felt compelled to report it and find out what it was. The biggest hole in the flare theory is that it completely contradicts thousands of eyewitness testimonies consistently describing a massive V-shaped craft flying slower than a stall speed of a small plane, totally silent and very low to the ground. Some witnesses were directly underneath as the craft flew over. According to witness accounts, at least one large V-shaped craft, and possibly other triangular craft, flew across the entire state of Arizona, starting from the small town of Paulden all the way down to Phoenix and Tucson. Flares don't travel hundreds of miles, and witnesses in southern and northern Arizona couldn't possibly see flares over the Barry Goldwater Range. Another valid argument against the flare theory is that these mysterious orbs are commonly seen over populated areas of Phoenix and the Gila Bend Indian Reservation. Nobody would ever drop those flares over a populated area. They're cylinders that are about three feet tall, 10 inches wide, and they, in, they are intense magnesium. And they sometimes hit the ground, they're still burning, so they'd start fires. Dropping flares, or any objects for that matter, over populated areas and Indian reservations is a serious FAA violation and prohibited due to possible injury to civilians, damage to property, and ground fires.